The sun continuing to make its presence felt. There's still a few grey clouds hanging overhead. What will this day have in store for us? Yes, hours starting to wind down now in this second ever 24 hour race from Mount Panorama Bathurst End. To battle out F class. There's your race leader, the 427 Yellow Monaro, and that's uh, the Lamborghini, the Donut King Lamborghini, trying to outlap itself. It's now between the two Monaros, the 05 and the 427 car. Now, the Lamborghini has worked its way up inside the top ten. It's currently running ninth outright, running fourth in its class. At one stage, was as low as 20th. Yeah, Alan Simonson on a bit of a charge at the moment, really stretching the Lamborghini's legs, trying to look around the outside of the Monaro and go straight through. So he's fought back and picked up another lap on himself. What a shame we didn't see the speed from the Lamborghini early in the race. Yeah, it is a shame that they had problems because the car, I think, is proving a few people wrong. A lot of people expected there to be reliability problems. Yeah, team that's uh, doing so well up until this point anyhow. Further back in the field, one of the uh, production cars, another Ford. This is the BA XR6 Turbo, car 95. John McElroy, Ken Douglas, Chris Stilwell and Phil Kirkham looking after the driving duties of this car this weekend. Yeah, so far a pretty consistent run from the uh, the car we saw debut earlier in the year in the uh, the Pro Car Champ Series. It's done limited miles, I think only two or three race meetings, with the aim of having a very, very consistent, reliable run here at Mount Panorama this weekend. On board the car now, this is what it's like going across the top of the mountain as the sun comes up over Bathurst City. Oh, problems. Oh. Now that's one of the, uh, the Nissan 200 SXs. I don't know whether it's car 200 or car 222, one of the Hayson Motorsport cars. Speaking with Clark Quinn a few moments ago and said, can you catch that car and uh, take, you know, outright class on as he said, not unless something goes wrong with it and gave me a big cheeky grin. <laughs> Gary Young behind the wheel of the Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 7 that's running in class D for GD performance cars under $160,000. I think these guys have had pretty much a trouble free run too, uh, Grand most of the weekend. Yes, yeah, certainly. I mean, it's, it's been a good weekend for them. They haven't been out there pushing it in super quick lap times and, and upsetting anyone. They've just been driving nice and consistently and uh, the Gary Holt team having Michael Spees on board as their tactician this weekend. Michael Spees, for those who don't recognise the name, has, has won countless number of, almost, of Sydney to Hobart yacht races, uh, which Gary Holt has also been involved in. In fact, Michael Spees jumped on board the Nokia team and, and basically took an unproven team to a, an outright victory in the Sydney to Hobart yacht race. A very, very smart sailor and a guy who enjoys coming out and playing motorsport. This car now running at uh, fourth in class, Andrew. We should just say that the Monaros are circulating now five seconds off the pace. They're just stroking it around. <laughs> Picking up uh, car 27 now, back in uh, class D. In fact, this is uh, second in class D. The car that's owned by Wayne Russell, currently being driven by Mark King, has had a uh, race-long battle with the PM Peter Boyle and BMW, which is leading the class at the moment. But it's now dropped uh, one lap behind in the last uh, two hours, Grant. 3,007 kilometres, 12 safety car periods, 20 lead changes between the two Monaros, 33 cars still running, 12 retirements so far, and the fastest lap, surprise, surprise, the Mosler, with Martin Short behind the wheel at 215.1, and joining us in commentary is co-driver Patrick Pierce. Patrick, you must absolutely be loving your first time here at Mount Panorama. Yeah, I can't believe it. It's, um, what a place. I mean, I was... <laughs> I've been around it a couple of times on the PlayStation, and it, it does not prepare you at all for this. It's in a, my first lap, I almost scared myself about 20 times. I mean, it was just amazing. <laughs> and you've had most of the running in the wet, I think. Every time you've been in the car, the heavens have opened. Yeah, um, within a lap of me getting in the car and both my, uh, my first two stints, it absolutely chunked it down. Yeah. Um, it makes it twice as hard as I'd, I'd only had a couple of laps uh, in the wet before I went out my stint, so it made me very nervous. And before this, you'd only had, I think, one race at Donington in the dark in the Mosler, so there was not only getting used to the weather conditions and the circuit, but the car and racing at night. It's been a hell of a learning curve. Yeah, it's been a pretty steep learning curve, but I've, I've enjoyed every minute. I've, you know, the last, uh, my last stint I just did, I finally got some dry running in the car. The boss has just uh, walked in uh, the room to check up on <laughs> yeah. too, Patrick. You might want to throw you in the Mosler for the last stint. Who knows? But, uh, well, I don't know if it rains, you might do. <laughs> yeah, you see the clouds coming. That's what it is. They say that uh, Bathurst is rated as, as one of the, you know, the third best road circuits in the world. I mean, would you agree with that? Definitely. Um, I mean, I've been lucky enough to drive around a couple of the, the good tracks in Europe. Um, Spa's probably been my favourite before that, but this is a real, real tough circuit. The Mosler now turning its way through Falcon Elbow, the Lamborghini up behind, and that's Mosler MT900R in fifth place. Runner-up last year, of course, but the competition even tougher this season. Lamborghini of Will Powers running there inside the uh, 
In fact, uh, not uh, Will Power Simons are behind the wheel of car 20, running inside the top nine. Gee, we expected a great performance from this car, chasing down the Mosler now. But uh, so many tyre failures, they ripped off a brake line with the first tyre failure. So uh, at least it's good to see them still circulating. Yeah, seven punctures, I think, the Lamborghini has had over the course of the race so far. It's been in and out of the pit lane a heck of a lot. When it's gone, it's gone very well. And this morning, we were treated to a great drive by Simonson as he mixed it with the Monaros. And coming now down towards VIP Pet Foods Corner, hustling on behind the Mosler. It's the Just Car Insurance Monaro, Stephen Richards, Peter Brock within four tenths of a second. But if that diff problem can happen to one Monaro, it could happen to the other, you never know. So let's wait and see what happens for 0-5. I'm sure they're studying the data as well and keeping everything crossed that there are no problems for the Peter Brock car. Not peeling off into pit lane this lap, so one more lap. Looking at the times though, 220.19. I mean, uh, I thought when you had a hot dip, you actually pulled your lap times back a little bit, but no sign of that. Yeah, it's just gone quicker again by under a tenth from Peter Brock, Stephen Richards across the line. Now we're getting a report that number six, which is the Uwe Altsen, Jürgen Altsen, Arno Klaus and Michael Bartels Porsche is being black flagged for speeding in the pit lane. He's going to have to come and serve a penalty and I think it's Uwe Altsen at the wheel. Now Uwe is a hard charger, that's for sure. And certainly last year, one or two teams frequently falling foul of the pit lane speed limit and it's happening again. Of course now with people tiring and getting a bit sloppy and losing concentration, all these little errors can start to creep into the whole complex of the race. Winding down to the last night minutes of this race just having a look at the the laps per hour comparison this year uh, against last year 2002 we averaged 21.6 laps per hour on track now in 2003 this race to do 21.8 laps per hour now when you consider the number of really lengthy safety par car periods we've had under those horrific uh, wet conditions it's quite amazing that actually we're, we're still looking to be at this stage ahead of uh, last year's target time of 532 laps but the whole pace of the race much much more aggressive this year because the level of competition to the Monaro's has been uh, more acute and they've all had to up their game this year although interestingly despite Martin Short's modest statement that he's the king of the mountain his fastest lap not as good as last year's fastest lap set by Garth Tander which was in the 214s 214.3 set last year Ford XR6 Turbo this is uh, currently being driven by Chris Stillwell in the production car class for cars under $80,000 Stillwell of course a great name in Australian motor racing Bib Stillwell who um, has had a long history in very successful open wheeler racing before he passed on. This car, a brand new car to uh, the Australian Production Car Championship, debuted at Phillip Island earlier this year, crewed by uh, John McElroy and the team out of Southern Rural Four Dealers. Let's have a listen to it as it uh, rocks and rolls across the top of the mountain. five in the pits the just car insurance car of peter brock is in the pits now is this a schedule change one would assume so brock getting out of the car murphy's getting in so greg murphy i spoke to 30 minutes or so ago wasn't sure whether he'd do this stint andrew yeah well they just uh, have jacked the car up and they're just looking behind underneath out of the depth but it doesn't seem to be a problem there there's quite a large dent in the side of this car the 05 car peter brock just uh, Walking away from the machine now, and uh, maybe they're concerned about the diff of this car. The fuel is still going in. Brocky is back in the pits, and then we expect, and uh, it's off the jacks, and it's going away. And okay, I'm going to try and dive in now. I'm going to try and dive in and see if I can get Peter Brock very quickly. And uh, Brock is going straight back to the back of the garage to report to, to Gary exactly what the situation with his car is. And I'll just see if I can grab a very quick word. I'm not sure the camera can come with me. And uh, I don't want to break into this conversation just at the second. And uh, Brocky, a bit of concern on his face. And uh, why don't you come back to me in just a second when Brock's uh, got his helmet off? Well, big moment for Peter Brock. Will this year be number 10 for him? The Monaro debuted here back in 1968 in 327 cubic inch form. It uh, again did so well in 1969 when Brock debuted here. And uh, 1984, another hold at one, two. In fact, a dealer T1-2 for Peter Brock. And how would Brocky be feeling now, getting down to the last 90 minutes of this race? He hung up his helmet back in 1997. We thought we'd seen the end of Peter Brock, but the uh, the fire in the belly continued. The 24-hour race was the one that said, I'm going to have a crack at that. That could well be number 10. I just wonder whether he's going to get back in for the last 20 minutes or so. I can't believe that the race will finish with anybody other than Peter Brock driving 05 across the line. Isn't it amazing the passion that, that Peter Brock has yeah. taken into this race? You know, he's really attacked this. From the start yesterday when he got out in front, we saw those shots from inside the Monaro and the look in Peter Brock's eyes 
was just wild. He really wanted to get out there and he really wanted to make a statement that he was here to race. And at 58 years of age, <laughs> he's the master, isn't he? Simple as that. Great shots for the Just Car Insurance on board telemetry. And you can see with Murph behind the wheel, they're, uh, they're not stressing the car at all. It's uh, not uh, getting over 5,000 RPM. They can rev to about 5758 through the Hollinger six-speed sequential gearbox back to second gear down through the dipper. 90 k's, 100 k's. We'll see what the speed is on the main straight for you. And a glorious sound, just an absolute superb sound from this 427 seven-litre Chev-based engine. stuff here at Mount Panorama, just under 270 k's as he breaks to come through the Caltex Haviland chase. Sets the car up, turns left, turns right, back on the power up towards the completion of the lap. This car 11 laps ahead of its nearest challenger and still chasing the 427 car, so they don't have to stress it too much. And of course now the team needing to be sure that they don't have a diff problem like there is this question mark over 427, the race leading Monaro. Absolutely, so it's Monaro, Monaro, then Porsche, Porsche, then the Mosler as we get into uh, 22 hours, 40 minutes and 35 seconds of this 24-hour endurance race presented by Formula Green at Eagle Boys Pizza here from Mount Panorama Bathurst. Tommy Erdos joining us in the commentary. Has it been the best uh, weekends for you, Tommy? Well, it hasn't, but uh, it's been great uh, to just come here and uh, experience this fantastic circuit. I mean, uh, I heard you earlier saying that uh, this is probably in the third, probably best uh, real uh, circuit in the world. And, uh, Do you agree with that? No, I don't. I disagree. I think it's got to be uh, close to the top. I have really? to say I'm in love with this circuit. It's fantastic. <laughs> What makes it so special? Well, I mean, a circuit is just a combination of, of corners and straights, isn't it? It's just the whole place, really. It's, it has everything that a driver really wants to experience. Uh, the chase, uh, not just the right-hander of the chase, but having to slow it down to get through the left and right after that. Um, you know, the mountain, the stickness of the mountain as you go down, it's, it's just a phenomenal place. And in terms of 24-hour races, I mean, they do say that this potentially is the toughest of all because you don't get a rest. The track is of such a demanding nature that you actually don't, like Le Mans or somewhere like that, actually get time in the car to rest between corners. Absolutely. Le Mans, you have uh, long straights, uh, I mean, four times at Le Mans that you, you're going over 180, 190 miles per hour, uh, which sounds like high speeds, which it is, but it also gives you time to rest, as you say. And here you have walls around you all the time, uh, or mostly all the time. Um, you've got a lot of differential in speed with the different classes and that's something that you need to be focused all the time. So, yeah, it, it's, a, it's, it's a real test, a real test for 24 hours. One of the things you have here as well is the TAFE crew that can help rebuild the car, and they, I think, had your Porsche for something like six and a half hours in the night. Now is the answer. Now they're bringing the Monaro in. Well, how long is this going to take? The race leader's already gone over to the Brock car, the 05 car being driven at the moment by Greg Murphy, and there's a driver change going on with 427 as well. Yes, now what uh, are they actually going to do to the car? Will it be a, uh, a if cooler change to the rear end, will they try and hotwire the, the, the pump to the battery, which has been suggested? They've got a whole, as you saw earlier, rear axle assembly on standby to go into the car, but a critical moment for the car that has led the majority of this 24-hour endurance race. Too hard. We'd love to get a one too. But uh, our car can do the job, there's no doubt about that. And uh, with Greg Murphy behind the wheel, is a fine driver. Uh, who knows? What was the first thought that popped into your head when you woke up this morning? Oh, what's that noise there? Oh, that's that Porsche. I can't <laughs> believe the volume of sound. I could hear it above everything else. Oh, that's right. Headlight Bathurst, day. yeah, 24 hours. Hey, wake up. <laughs> Time to get back to work. <laughs> <laughs> but really, you've got to uh, pay compliment to Gary Rogers. I mean, you guys have really come here totally on top of the game this weekend, haven't you? Yeah, but I think that, uh, well, it pays to be, you know, hometown advantage. I guess you've got all your equipment there and you've your people who understand a, the cars, uh, but it's been uh, a, a, a first-class effort. Get two to cars up. to do a job like this anywhere in the world. I mean, you look at sometimes I've, I've seen guys like Schnitzer and those fellas, like, or Yost, mm. you know, at Le Mans, yep. and they do a fabulous job. This is sort of a similar deal. That everyone knows what they're supposed to be doing, and uh, they've done it impeccably. Andrew, what have you got for us? Got Stephen Richards just climbed out. When Grand Denny was behind the wheel, they couldn't get the car to rev over six and a half thousand RPM. They brought it in, filled it with fuel, fixed the problem for a while. Eventually came in, changed the whole fuel tank, dropped from first to second in the class, but uh, now continue to look at the lap times. I mean, Quinny's doing his 223s and they've had a tremendous run. 
They got away pretty lightly, though, from that scare early on in the race. It was this Porsche, remember, that clashed with Robert Brooks' BMW, put the BMW in the wall and out of the race. That car escaped pretty much damage-free and has gone well ever since, apart from, as you say, that one mechanical drama in the night. Little brush... Uh during the wall, or during, I should say, the night when uh, the, the downpour came and uh, Tony on slicks at about 30 kilometres per hour crunched the wall, folded in the, the right-hand rear guard over the tyre. They brought it in, pulled it out and no further damage. But I guess, Peter Brock, the changing conditions this weekend, I mean, we always know Mount Panorama throws up, uh, you know, so much over the years, but, uh, you know, so many different changing weather conditions from as Tony Quinn waves to the camera from, you know, greasy tracks, dry tracks, absolute torrential downpour. Mark Brett of just saying uh, it's been very kind to us, it's been kind to everyone, it's been kind to the farmers, it's been kind, <laughs> hasn't it? <laughs> We've had a bit of everything. So it's, uh, it has been difficult. Do you know what? I haven't checked, uh, except for the warm up. Okay, so it's the other way from what I predicted. They've it's got seven go. minutes to go until the end of the race. Now it's the game on. Oh. So Tanda in second, Murphy in the lead. Is it going to remain that way? Well, you, said, you heard Gary Rogers say seven minutes now. The clock reckons just over eight minutes, but what's a minute between friends after 24 hours? The two Monaros then nose to tail. The way he's done this does surprise me, I've got to say. This is dangerous, isn't it? It is. It's dangerous, but I tell you what, it's fun, folks. Get into it. Look at this. <laughs> now, what if the unthinkable, what if the two Monaros took each other out? Well, I think uh, what Gary Rogers is relying on, clearly by these radio instructions, and folks, we've been listening to this for the last 20 minutes or so, is he's relying on these two drivers to show responsibility, to show caution, give each other a fair go, Think of the team, but race. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better end of the 24-hour race. Wow. Play hard, but play safe. And, of course, this man could win if they do hit. Gee. But uh, I'm quite sure Greg Murphy, who's absolutely on a roll, goes into next weekend's Australian Touring Car Championship, the V8 Supercar Series, with a chance of taking out the title from Marcus Ambrose and Mark Scaife. Hot off uh, some wins at Pukekohe, two wins over there. Hot off a Bathurst win, and again, getting down to the last six and a half minutes of this race. How heartbreaking is it for the teams? Well, three tenths of a second, folks. Three laps to go. Nigel Greenway, our statistician, who stayed up all night to keep the information pumping for us. And the race is on. The lion roars at Mount Panorama. Murphy and Tanda, nose to tail, coming up to Shell Corner now. And Tanda does the best lap of the race at 2.14.4894. Not as quick as last year, but he's the quickest man around the mountain. He's just that marching short who thought he was that quick. But now Garth Tanda proves that he is on for a win here. He's the fastest man around the mountain this weekend. He's right up behind Murphy, heading up Mountain Straight, the two marvellous Monaros, nose to tail. It was lion. fastest by one one hundredth of a second oh. in 6.2 kilometres. <laughs> and the lion is out of the cage at the mountain. So, Murphy, second fastest time of the race at 2.14.49. Tander at 2.14.48. Holden have unleashed the, the young guns. The lions are at Mount Panorama. Oh. And that traffic is exactly what you don't want. Come on, get out of the way. You go left, you go right. Eventually, the back marker makes up his mind. The two oh. Monaros around the outside. There's a white flag being shown as well, which means a very slow vehicle. It was the Nissan that gets out of the way. There's more traffic for Murph. He's got to get his heart oh. in his mouth. Deep oh. breath, another back marker in the way. To the oh. left, there's Murph. A golf tander here, just following him through. Murphy's doing the hard work. Ford, you're watching. You've got to be back here next year in the Ford GT40. This is too good. You've got to be part of this. Murphy continuing to lead, Tanda winding down now, two and a half laps of this race to go, 24 hours and then nose to tail, same lap, same lap speeds, same two young drivers with the ambition to win this race. And spare a thought for the drivers in the other cars who've been out there with their teams for 23 hours and 50 minutes, just saying what is going on behind me, I see two big lions stalking me down. Uh, it's lap 525 and it's even closer than lap one, isn't it? Well. John Alexander, have you ever seen a Davis Cup final like this one? <laughs> oh, this is like uh, 10 all in the fifth set, and there's no tiebreakers. <laughs> Look at Tanda now. Four Picks minutes about a to go. Four minutes to go. Falls in behind through the Caltex Havilan chase. Four minutes to go in this race. They'll have two laps to go this time around if our stats are right. So it's still Murphy. Tanda on a charge. He's got the Four faster car. Go, Four minutes to go. Down they come then to VIP Pet Foods Corner. Tanda having a look on the outside, trying to unsettle Greg Murphy, trying to pressure him into a mistake. All he needs is for him to thump a curb, run a little bit wide, and that's going to give the advantage to Tanda. Nose to tail, they come across the line. 427, almost hidden, and now he looks on the inside. No, can't find a way through there. 216.8, 216.7. Murphy, again, one tenth of a second slower than Tanda that time around. Stationary car at the cutting. The Donut King cutting, you can see. There's a car there right on the oh. racing line. If that brings out the safety car, that's done it, hasn't it, for Murphy? 
Car in the chase. Up they go. Tandra has got one corner to make this stick. He's going to have a look on the inside. He's going to be able to do it. Nose to tail. That, I think, was Tandra's last chance with that car in the road. Surely he's going to bring the safety car out. Hopefully they can uh, roll it back down out of the way. That's probably the best chance we have. But Murphy well and truly had the door shut there on Tanda. Tanda couldn't get the run. This is where the slow oh. car is around the outside. So at this stage, now again, more slow traffic. Murphy reads it beautifully, though. Tanda goes with him. I think the slow car is the 888 Willpower Porsche that's come back out of the pits and ground to a halt. Well, there's no indication yet of a safety car. I think everybody in race control is too engrossed in this battle as well to worry about it. Well, 525 laps, 532 the distance last year. They won't cover the same amount of distance due to the number of safety cars, the horrific conditions. Listen to the crowd roar on Mount Panorama. The Holden battle isn't over yet. 23 hours, 57 minutes, 10 seconds. Into the last three minutes of the race. It could not be closer, could it? Look at this. The two Monaros running absolutely nose to tail and Murphy under all this pressure. And it's not as if he's not been up all night either. He is a tired man, so is Tanda. And the adrenaline now pumping through them as they come onto Conrad Strait once again. Lap 526. Amazing stuff. Peter Fitzgerald back there still in third place in the Fokker Tires Porsche oh. from Olsen. In the German Porsche car six, the Mosler of Martin Short, 900. What's going to happen when they come down to the Calatex? Have a chase. Look at Tanda. Thinks about a run on the inside. Has the door shut. He's in full attack mode. Another slower car. He's the number 70 Nash Motorsport Porsche that's going to have to dart out of the way. Greg Murphy will hesitate and just oh. work out which way to go. He goes to the outside and Tanda follows him through. They're almost touching now, these two. They're so close. They're going to be side by side. And they're coming down towards the last corner. Not quite. Again, Tanda unable to get the line. So narrow is the circuit. Up they come now across the start and finish line. How long have we got? We've got less than two minutes. It's going to be one more lap. One, one more lap, folks. They're on their last lap and the fight is not over yet. The Monaro rules the mountain, but who's going to rule between Murphy and Tanda? The big long run now up Mountain Straight. Murphy continues to lead. The red car is sharing with Peter Brock. Will this be Brocky's 10th Bathurst win or will Garth Tanda take it from him? You'll be lynched if you do, I'm sure. You saw the mechanics looking at the screens there in the Gary Rogers Motorsport Garage. They haven't drawn breath for a quarter of an hour. They are absolutely engrossed in this. Another oh. slower car negotiated. And Murphy there darting up on the inside. I reckon, I'm tempting fate, but I think he might just have done enough on this last lap now. But let's see. Well, of course, slower traffic may well come into play. Yellow flags, of course, for that stop car of the Donut King cutting. It is the 888 Porsche parked there. More traffic that uh, Greg Murphy and Garth Tander have to weave their way around. It's going to be Conrad straight, I think, where it'll all be oh. played out. But here they come again, still tied together, these two. And you can see by the body language of the car, these guys are not holding back. They're pushing hard. This is a proper race. Whatever you might think about team orders in motorsport, forget them as far as this is concerned. You heard Gary Rogers taking them off the leash, and aren't we grateful that he did so? Absolutely. Full credit to Gary Rogers Motorsport and Holden for letting these two boys run it uh, cleanly and fairly right to the end as they come down oh. through oh. the tire. Oh, look at the slow traffic. Peter Boylan's BMW, the class leader in Class D with Rick Bates behind the wheel at the moment. And Murphy on the brakes. Tanda still reading the traffic beautifully with him. They wrap up the Tomlinson, Toyota Altezza as well. There goes Murphy through. Tanda's still there. He's lost absolutely nothing. But this is where he could, could, could make the move. They're onto Conrad straight for the last time. We've got 13 seconds to go. The checker flag will be out this time. Slippery surface flag as well. Another variable to add in on the last lap. But Murphy looking a little bit stronger. There's, what, two, three lengths possibly between the two as they go to the chase for the last time. It's going to be a Monaro 1-2. But which way is it going to go? Is it going to be the 0-5 or the 4-2-7, Craig Lanyer? Well, there we go. Tanda's got to make his move now. He's got to play the hand. And Murphy's got him covered with 24 hours about to tick over. The first car to cross the line once the 24-hour clock has moved through will take the win. It's Murphy with Tanda right behind him again. Slow traffic forcing Tanda out wide. They come through VIP for the last time. We're looking at Greg Murphy in 05. He takes the win. He gives Peter Brock the perfect 10. Can you believe it? The Bathurst 24 hours has been bigger, better and Brock. Peter Brock wins that in 05 with Greg Murphy, Jason Bright and Todd Kelly. What a fight, folks. What a fight. A great clean fight between Greg Murphy and Garth Tando right to the end, Grant Boyden. What a race. Uh, you couldn't ask for a better fish finish. The two Holden side by side. The Holden Monaros and they're going to do a lap of victory almost, making their way down into pit lane now. Let's go to pit lane. Here's Grant Denyer. So here's the final placings. Peter Brock, Greg Murphy, Jason Bright, Todd Kelly take the win in the Monaro from Pretty, Tandem, McConnell and Richards. Then the first of the Porsches, Morris, Fitzgerald, Shearman and Tulin.
Then the first of our B-Class competitors, the Bartels, Klaassen, Uwe Elson and Jürgen Elson entry in fourth outright, a great result. Martin Short, Pierce Lamb and Spurl in fifth in car 900. Then Tony Quinn, Clark Quick, Marcus Marshall, Grant Denyer, second in class in the Porsche from Floyd, Donaldson, Halliday and Donaldson. The father and son team there, Stokel, Simonson, Yulden and Peter Hackett in the Lamborghini. They did a great job to bounce back into eighth spot after having tyre problems throughout the weekend. In ninth, the Conduras, Power, Freestone and Wall entry in car 888. And well done to Peter Boyle and Jeff Morgan, Hanson and Bates, taking out D-Class in car 71 and finishing in the top 10. Winners of the Invitational Class to Steve Williams, Graham Moore, Terry Bozenjak in the Commodore, Russell, Cramp, King and Stuber in the BMW, Parker, Waters, Sala and Gazard further back, third in Class D, the Salmon, Boatwright, Caswell, Hastings, Subaru, then Holt, Young, Brock and Monday in the Mitsubishi from Dean, Rubis and Wanless in the Subaru. Then we go back to Osborne, Roken, Keane and Grotchell. They took out Class E in lucky number 13, a great result. Dean, Pye and Smith finished in 18th spot in Car 3. Then uh, Bruce and Beric Linton, Jamie Cartwright and Matthew Jackson in the BMW M3R from Chanda, Gillespie and McFarland, McElroy, Douglas Stilwell and Phil Kirkham. Over the page, the Metzler, Kovacs, James Brock and Brame entry in 28 spot at DNF. The Tomlinsons, Neil and Edie in 26 spot in car 42. The Wilson, Conduras, Jenkins, Palmer, Ferrari from David Russell, Warren and Ian Luff, Scotty Lozman, Holden, Commodore. Then Shepard, Bailey and Doyle in the Honda Integra Type R. Hazel Woods, Robinson and Hunt in 33 spot. Montermini, Pater, Engelhorn and Brabham in 34th spot in car 48. Then the Urash, Wilson, Newton, Erdos, Porsche, Pilkington, Cribben, Hill and Hooker went out in the first three and a half hours with engine failure in the Nissan. Then Westbrook, Moore and Mitchell also crashing out in the BMW. As the champagne flows at this 24 hour endurance race at Mount Panorama, 31 years after his first Bathurst win, 16 years after his last Bathurst win,